Welcome to a landscape full of hidden treasures that once glowed with fire and echoed with the sounds of industry. Vinavon had all the raw materials any would-be 18th century industrialist might wish for. Iron ore, coal and limestone, the basic ingredients of the iron industry, could be found nestling in the hillsides. And iron was in great demand to feed the Industrial Revolution. When businessman Thomas Hill and his partners came to Blynavon, they struck it rich. In doing so, they also transformed the landscape. Large-scale iron making relied on vast supplies of fuel to heat the furnaces. Coke, made from coal, was ideal. Coal ran like bands through the hills, yet more was hidden deep beneath the valley floor. Before long, deeper mines were needed, and by 1860, Blynavon's big pit was in operation. People flocked to work in the mines, and until the Mines Act of 1842, men, women and children worked underground. Men cut the coal, but women and boys could be found pulling drams, and children as young as four or five could be found working as trappers, opening and closing the wooden doors that allowed fresh air to flow through the mine. A vitally important job, carried out in almost complete darkness. As the ironworks grew, so did the demand for limestone, and new quarries were opened like the one at Pusti. Dating to before 1819, this site is still exceptionally well preserved. There's no iron without iron ore, a rock that has the precious iron trapped within it. Ironstone runs in seams like coal. At first, ironstone was scoured from the surface of the land. Scouring relied on damming up streams, and then, when the water was released under pressure, it would loosen the iron stone, making it easier to collect. Later, like coal, deeper seams of iron stone were mined using pits. Mining and iron making produced waste. Coal spoil and slag was tipped onto the spare ground, dramatically transforming the landscape. A network of tram roads and tunnels grew up to help service industry's needs. You can still see the scars that these transport systems left on the landscape. Tram roads were early railways, but instead of engines and wagons, these railways were used by horses pulling open-top carts full of raw materials or finished iron. The terrain around Blynavon could be quite tricky, so tunnels were dug and bridges built to save precious time and effort in transporting the materials around. Perhaps the best known example is Pulti Tunnel. At 2.4 kilometres long, this was the longest tram road tunnel ever dug anywhere in the world. It was here at the ironworks that all the raw materials came together, ingredients in the recipe for making iron. Conceived as a multi-furnace site from the start, at its peak, there were six furnaces here working day and night smelting the iron ore. When it was ready, the iron was tapped from the furnace. Now freed from the ore, the white hot metal ran into troughs in the casting house floor forming bars of pig iron. When cool, the pig iron was loaded onto trams, taken up onto Hill's tram road and over the Blorange mountain. This primitive railway, built in 1815 by iron master Thomas Hill, cut its way through the countryside. It gave better access to the quarries and mines, and importantly, it also linked the ironworks to the forge at Gandharis and onto the canal for many years the main means of transporting the iron to market. Gandharis Forge took the pig iron and hammered and pressed it to improve its strength and its value. The resulting product was known as wrought iron. In time, Gandharis became a major producer of rails for the world's growing steam railway networks. A new community sprang up around the forge and the remains of some of the workers' housing can still be seen in the landscape today. Before the advent of steam railways, all of Blynavon's iron went to market via the canal, but the canal was a long way down in the valley floor below. Hill's solution was to build an ingenious incline. Using two parallel sets of rail and with some help from gravity, full wagons went down, pulling empty wagons back up the slope ready for filling, and so the cycle went on. The incline cut so deep into the fabric of the land that this path can still be seen. Finally, the iron had reached Llanfoist Wharf and the canal. Now it could begin its waterborne journey down to Newport, from where it was exported all around the world. The wharf 
was a hive of activity, with canal boats jostling for position as they waited to receive their cargo. The cutting of the canal was a huge undertaking, all done by hand. So now you see, this place, this landscape, provided everything the iron industry of the 18th and 19th century needed to thrive. All here, hewn from the land. Its legacy lives on in the landscape and the town today. A landscape full of hidden treasures waiting to be discovered. Quarries and mines now silent but still visible. The scars of tram roads, now pleasant pathways. Once hellish industrial monuments, now welcoming visitors. It's an adventure. My name's Alex Hinchelwood. I'm Traffic and Events Manager here at the Pontypool and Bernathan Railway. And I've been a member since 1997, so a fair old time. And I've obviously started off when I was a lot younger, flipping tickets and helping out General Dog's body. And now I'm a driver on the steam engines and it's really quite amazing, to be honest. Um, really enjoy what we do here. We've got a, a great team and a lot of friends, so it's really excellent. This weekend we've opened the railway to Blenheim High Level and the first passenger train ran yesterday morning, the 29th of May 2010. First passenger train for 61 years, which is a fair, fair achievement. Oh yeah, we've had a really good turnout the last two days. Yesterday, really bad weather, but still a really good turnout with all the local railway enthusiasts coming to be on the first train, uh, which is always a good thing. And then today we've had more families and, and couples and things coming along to enjoy the new railway and the new experience that it brings. We've gone from a 20-minute round trip now to an hourly round trip, so it makes all the difference. And we pass through Blind Avon, and you can see all the attractions like Big Pit, the Heritage Centre, the town, and also the ironworks. Obviously, um, Steam engines take a long while to warm up in the morning and a long time to cool down in the afternoon. And today we've probably burned to about a, a ton and a half of coal. Uh, which is a, a fair weight when you, when you look at it in uh, a big pile. So throughout the day we feed the fire and keep the steam going. Well, I booked on this morning at about uh, quarter to seven, and the engine was hot, so uh, 
a late start. If it was cold, it would have been more sort of half past five, six o'clock. And it is now 25 to seven in the evening, and we're still here packing up.